seen that photo? Okay, we don't know whether that's the actual cherry or some not. It looks really real. And I've seen it floating around the internet for years. It looks like it looks like the show was over. Somebody just took the props and just threw them out in the garbage. <laughs> no, I've never seen this picture. Do you know what happened to the stuff? I know you Paul, said, uh, Paul has everything. He has he, everything. He never throws anything. So, so he has the set. He, has he does. Everything. Yeah, oh, he has my Jumbie's box. Oh, good, 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 good. He's got all of Because when you see that, it's, it makes you sad to think that they might throw something like that out. <laughs> it could be oh, a Photoshop, no, no. But, but people no, have been it, speculating whether it was real or yeah, not to see what your opinion about it was. It looks, it looks like camera equipment went next to it. You know, this stuff? Yeah. You know, it's, I have to say, it, it's got like the eyelashes are torn off of her. And it looks real, so uh, I don't, but I don't know. See, Cherry's eyelids actually were dimensional. They actually opened it. Clothes and oh. these look flat. So it most likely is a copy. Oh, good. But it's a pretty good copy. <laughs> well, like but it doesn't kinda... look like this mouth is going to move. Yeah. Because Cherry's mouth actually moved by a puppeteer pushing. Oh. With her feet. She's like inside of there operating an arm. Wow. <laughs> Sit on me, Pee Wee! <laughs> Pumping her feet and moving her arms, right. and also operating the eyeballs. I think we may have had the eyeball, eyes moving electronically, but they could have been on the head turn of the puppeteer. I'm not to remember. Well, that's good because you know, on forums and stuff, when they talk about the picture, nobody really could, could no tell. I figured you might know more than anything. That's yeah, probably no, I mean, I, I don't think so because Sherry's mouth would slightly ajar. Right. So so Paul owned, is a jar. owned all the yeah. stuff that he, he was able to take it with him. Oh yeah. Oh that's good. Yeah. Correct. Let's see. I was I was curious what I, I know you and Paul would sit in the room and just come up with all the ideas for the show and there were there really wasn't like an executive producer. It was you guys just sitting around. Oh. Yeah. 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 Were, were there characters that didn't make it into the show? Uh, ideas that were maybe didn't work or were too risque or too too weird? Or, did you think of anything that... Um, you know, I mean, there's stuff that uh, that was weird. We knew that it was weird in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I mean, because we had artistic control. The only person I had to answer to was Paul. Oh. You know? So, and I... Drag the camera around all over the place to try to find some blocking that he liked. And he'd say, I find that blocking weakened. <laughs> I said, okay, well, let's try another. Well, I don't like that. How about this? How about this? So when you weren't doing the puppeteering and the in the in the box and everything, and you were on the camera, I was directing it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I was busy the whole time. The nice thing is, and we shot Zombie in uh, against a blue screen. Or green screen, can't remember which. Oh. Uh, with just my makeup, just and we shot me sitting outside of the box because the first season I was physically in the box in every shot. Right. And uh, then when we moved to the show out to California and I started directing it, it was just like we're gonna shoot John B. out. Basically, every every thing that we need John before for I don't know how many seasons we did all together oh, but we shot out like two years of shows wow and I sat there on the set and Paul wouldn't be at the center I'd be directing flowers the flowers okay screaming or the flowers line about, here comes the king of cartoons you know <laughs> but, um, but no it was, it was really fun I loved uh, I loved directing it was like I couldn't wait to go to the other right that's the best gig ever. It was, it was really fun. I mean, I, I enjoyed it very much. Well, we enjoyed it too. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, how long before the show start for the character of John B? Because you had to come up with the John B's and the language and the saying. How early did that come before the show started? Was that really close to that? That yeah. came right at the when we did the original stage show. Uh, oh. 
which was Midnight's at the Groundlings, a 99-seat theater, and we would do the Groundling shows, and then at midnight, I mean, we'd already done two shows, and then midnight, we're getting on green makeup to do... Uh, my original makeup was done not for the television series, but for the stage show, it was done by V. Neal, won the Academy Award for Beetlejuice, and she did Dewey's Big Adventure in his last movie, and Tim Burton's, uh, I love Tim Burton movies. Yeah, she's great. She's really cool. And then the John Bees is kind of a takeoff on Hawaiian? Yeah, I was from a uh, sketch that we were doing in the Groundlings, and I was playing a waiter in a Hawaiian restaurant. I mean, like a kind of luau bob kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like trying to speak like, you know, bad Hawaiian. Hey, <laughs> like tourist guide Hawaiian. Right. Like, like a hot like a honey honey. Right. Where's going? I see. You know? I see. Can I get you a couple of tropical drinks? You know, something to get a coconut? <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. I did notice that Pee Wee had a lot of um, Hawaii influence in it. There's a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, there's an episode called Luau, Luau for Two. And uh, that's the episode also where uh, Pee Wee limbos and everybody's going, Hello, can you go? Hello, can you go? And of course, we do this effect so that you know, you can oh, right. literally bend yourself <laughs> underneath the <laughs> impossible <laughs> thing to be able to get yourself underneath. But that was fun. And then Todd Rudgren, do you know who he is? I know the name. Uh, he's a music producer. Yeah. He wrote that song, Hello, It's Me. And oh, he yeah, also yeah, yeah. wrote, uh, I don't want to work, I just want to bang on the right, right, drum right, right, all right. day. That's, what, that's Todd. Right. Right. Todd did the music in the background of the uh, Blue Alpha 2, and you can hear him sing. Make it like I'm and then you, I've seen on the IMDb page it talks about you worked for Disney, but it's not right. real clear. It doesn't go into detail what you did for Disney. You right. Um, yeah, I, I was a creative consultant for them for a long time, and then I became a show writer and director. And I got that gig because I was. Producing a, another children's show called uh, One Saturday Morning. It was kind of a very inventive show. Um, and Peter Hastings did it. And my friend Prudence, who did the animation for the TV show, was producing it. These people from Disney uh, called her up and said, Hey, you know anybody can do some voices for us? Because we're doing this demo. And this is the research and development part. Uh, and then these, these two people show up, and they look like the Campbell Soup Kids. They were the damn cutest people you've ever seen. The cute, sweet girl. Guy looks like, you know, Tom Cruise, and she looks like, you know, a movie star. And they, they were so sweet and so funny. And then they gave me all these, and I played the part of the uh, Chick Fetterman in this show called Bird Brain. All right, now. Which one of these is a uh, correct answer? Gesture recognition, voice recognition, or I don't know, I don't feel like working here anymore. <laughs> you know, and so then it was, a, it was all automated. So, and it was the branching system, so that if the, num if the person number one answered correctly, and they would, they would know, and it was actually able to play the game automatically, and you could see it on a computer programming room. It branches if player one survives and goes on to be player two. That ha who's oh, okay. the winner? And, and there's also like trick questions that so that it really was like you never knew what people were going to, you know, how they were going to answer. Right. So then uh, he said, "So if we do any more of these, do you want to write one?" I said, "Yeah, sure." So that's how I started writing for them. And then I was just like doing demos for them. They'd say, okay, we came up with this new, you know, product, and, you know, we <laughs> want you to demo it for us. And what I would do is I'd demonstrate it to the other people, you know, in-house. Wow. I did a ton of it, uh, once for Michael Eisner, hmm. for Bob Iger, and John Lasseter. Uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the funny thing about it with Michael Eisner, we were working with 
Lucky the Dinosaur. It's actually being puppeted by somebody sitting in a car behind him. And so he, you know, he's moving, he can move the thing around and have it sniff and, oh, yeah. and Michael Eisner said, tell it to stop looking at me. <laughs> like it was real. I mean, it was real to me. It was like my dog and I wrote that bit. Right. Based on like what are the things that my dog does, you know, like if I'm working on the paper, my dog comes in the middle of whatever right. I'm doing, you know, and my dog whine, you know, when you can get his way. Right. So I wrote yeah, this yeah. Uh, bit about the dinosaur wanting the balloon, right. and I put the balloon in the dinosaur's mouth, and then he lets go of it, and he started going. <laughs> It's like plaintively, like whining right. to get another balloon. So I have to buy the dinosaur and the balloon. <laughs> and I tie it under the little brace that he's holding. I said, here, I hope you don't float away. <laughs> so <we> come back. <laughs> it was really cute. Huh. It's all, you would puppet it? Uh, Somebody no, else would puppet it. There's an operator. Gotcha. And I, I'm on a headset. And he's telling me, you know, if there's something, you know, is going on or if the... Sometimes, uh, you know, since it was a demonstration, I mean, things could go wrong. Right. I mean, it, so we were all sort of prepared for that. Uh, but, yeah, no, it, uh, then I toured with uh, Live Wally. They built a, like, a $2 million version of the movie character Wally, and it was actually animated by uh, uh, Pixar programmers who actually did Wally. The movements were incredible. I mean, it was incredibly fast and speedy and made this clankety clank, this clank sound. And just you can see, you can, if you type in, you know, Wally Live Robot, you know, you, right. you'd see me hosting at the, what's the um, Benjamin Franklin Museum in Philadelphia. Oh. Have you ever seen that thing before? No. The Franklin Museum, it's really neat. I didn't know. Ben Franklin was such a great inventor, and he invented the bite And I used to do this bit with the Wally, where I'd say, yes, and he, uh, besides uh, uh, making the $100 bill, he's famous for, you know, <laughs> creating bi bifocals. And I would move my head up and down like this, and then Wally, eyes would, uh, iris. It was really amazing. And it would, it was really a fantastic room, really alive, and there was somebody backstage puppeting him, and you know, hitting buttons, and uh, then we did this thing called the Muppet Mobile Lab, which is, see if you can find some of that footage online, it's really fantastic. It's uh, Professor Bunsen, uh, Honeydew, and Beaker from the Muppets. Sure. And they're riding in what looks like an egg, and it's balancing on two wheels. It was built on a Segway. So it looks, it's this thing looks like, oh my God, it's going to fall over. Right. And then Beaker is sitting like way up on top of it behind him. We had programmed effects so that smoke came out of Beaker's ears, flash powder came up on the top of his head, it sprayed water. Uh, you know, a car alarm would go off. I mean, it, oh. it's really a great bit. And uh, we got the, when we did the playtest, we got the guy who did the original Bugs and Honey to do the uh, voice in the park. And it was live interactive with guests. Oh. So, uh, you know, it would drive up to people and, and he had cameras so he could say, like, oh, hello, how are you doing this afternoon? Oh, boy. Uh, like you camouflage plants. How do you ever find them in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, all would be here at the same time. Me 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 mo me mo me 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 the puppeteer could make Beaker talk, you know, when he wanted to. Uh, but that was that's a really fantastic thing. That was a yeah, amazing piece of engineering, you know. Yeah. And I would say, well, you know, what else can it do? You know? Right. 
it shoots fireworks off at the end. Of course. Yeah, I mean it does. Spend, it, spend, it, spend it has three kind of confetti better. cannons. I see. And it shoots boom, huh. confetti into the air. And I I wrote this thing about where I like I put in like Ode to Joy right. so that it goes like I timed the cannons with that and it's spraying water. It also sprays water <laughs> like about twenty five feet. I see. In, Different from about eight different water jets. Huh. Uh, so it would just thought the whole thing would explode and we went to the music and then we would play like the jump around song that right. you know what I mean? That dum 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 right. da 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 And then everybody would be like, you know, having beaker bounce up and down. Right. Yeah, that was it was a really fun bit. Yeah, because the IMD beep it just says worked for dinner. I mean there's yeah, that could it's, be anything. it's something I haven't really. Yeah. I mean, I, I just got I am. Oh yeah, I just pro, you know I, I just have I just curious. I haven't updated any of that information. Yeah. Uh, well, social media slow. <laughs> okay, and I have one one more super important question. Yeah, uh, you're you're good friends with Elvira mm -hmm. and Paul Pee Wee. Mm -hmm. In a no holds bar street fight, who would win? I think Elvira. I think Elvira oh, was she's pretty badass. She yeah. carries a knife with her in her belt. Okay, well that's because she used to the I cut you man. Right. Right. Yeah, she's she's carrying a weapon. Okay. So she well, I think it would be probably scarier. More of a monster. <laughs> Right. Then right. Elvira, uh, right. no, but Elvira would cut you for up first. Yeah, I'll edge to Elvira. Yeah, yeah, right. you know, definitely she would. I appreciate the interview. Yeah, my problem. <laughs> I mean, my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the show candy over there. It's pretty nice. Yeah. The tequila shoes. Yeah. Paul, Paul and I both bought those together on Sixth Street, this Mexican slot. We both bought the big platform shoes. Before the movie? Before the movie. Really? And we wore them in a, a sketch called the Alan Arnie Anderson in my Showtime sketch. So we were dressed up like two fat guys. And we wore those big platform shoes. It's from my Showtime special. It sounds like a lot of the stuff, whether it's Jombie or the movies and stuff, was all kind of little pieces taken from all the improv stuff. Oh, a, lot oh, yeah. of, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, improvising is like writing on their feet. And sometimes, right. you know, we, when we wrote Chris season, it was just like five guys in a room just trying to crack each other up, you know? That's all. Yeah. And just trying to think of like what's, well, it'd be fun. It's sort right. of fun stuff for kids to do. And then what, what made Paul decide he was done with the, the Playhouse? He wanted to just do more movie stuff and things like that? Well, it was a lot of work. I believe. You know? Yeah. And we shot the last. We planned on doing five seasons, and we shot the last two seasons like simultaneous, yeah. um, which was interesting because it was, then it was like piecing together all of these pieces that we had shot in like months and weeks before. Oh. But we also had the the dailies, the, I mean, the, the scenes that from the day before, so we could pick the takes that we liked, and the editor could start cutting it together. There's a lot of post-production involved in the show too. The, but if you if you watch it, this like it is so sound effect heavy. I mean, there's like one episode I can't remember how many over 500 and something sound wow. effects. Wow. Well, just every time his head would turn, there's a whipping sound. <laughs> you know. And uh, I like to uh, tell. Uh, Hey, come closer, come closer to the camera. And, oh, boom, you're too close, back up. And then the thing would, would right. the sound effect of the camera, the screeching tires and rocketing backwards. I got you. And then uh, the door opening, Every everybody, everything. I never noticed. Everything. Everything. Now I watch it's, it's so, it's so laden with uh, sound effects, oh. you know, totally. Yeah. Uh, and also visual effects, most production sure. visual effects. Right. Or well, even all the zombie stuff, the glow and the, yeah, the that beam was a, that comes out. Yeah, and the, the rings. Right. I always thought that was a cheesy effect. <laughs> <laughs> and how do the doors open? Because you don't see any wires. How do you get the doors to open? No. Yeah, really? Yeah, and they're on the strings. They're so on I strings. Can, I can close them and open them. 
I, I see. Mean, I, yeah, I just have to wear black gloves. Just tap I the doors see. open. You know, I mean, it was sort of like I think magnets, so that it was a pretty easy. It was kind of spring loaded, so they could open that way. And then I had a string that I pulled the ring down on to close the doors. I got you. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then once we started shooting my head. Then I didn't have to be in the box. Right. It was so much easier. Right. Except when a few seconds were the necessary in the box. But it was easier for me to direct. Right. So I wasn't there. Like, he would just be talking to an empty box. You know, and I would be doing it you know, off camera lens. What I noticed too, you're, I just always assumed Jami was every, in every single episode, but he's not. It's like, well, like two thirds, I mean, most of them, but it's like two thirds of them. But. Right. And that's just, maybe it comes down to editing, or? No. You know? I just put up all this bunch of <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. How did just, it was the way it was written. Right. How did you meet Paul in the first place? We were in the Groundlings together. It's a improv group in Los Angeles. Oh, uh-huh. And uh, with Phil Hartman and Cassandra Peterson, John Lovitz, Bill Farrell, and Lisa McCarthy. Just a ton of people from Saturday Night Live came out of the Browns. Right. And uh, I remember Paul, I think, auditioned for Saturday Night Live and didn't get it. Really? Uh huh. And that's wow. when he did his movie. The movie. The game for the kid. Yeah, that showed he them. started. He started <laughs> touring on his own, uh, which is the last time I was in Fort Collins, was when uh, Paul played Denver. Oh, we drove up here to visit my parents. Yeah, because I'd, I'd gone to Florida with him and visited his parents. Right. And met Judy in Florida. It's a really fun, nice couple. His dad was the old World War II hero, right? Yeah. 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 His dad was such a character. Yeah. yeah. When you, when you did UHF, you knew uh, Michael Richards. Did that help you get the Seinfeld gig at all? Uh, no, actually, uh, no. It, it sort of helped being Jambi because they were all the Seinfeld people were sure. Kiwi fans. Right. Uh, and I originally auditioned for. I was supposed to audition for this guy's part. Oh yeah. But uh, I'm waiting in the you know, waiting room and. The cast director comes out and says, um, would you like you, because I hear this laughter, huge, and they're laughing so hard, that Blue. Uh, and they said, well, we want you to read with Lou, but we want you to read the other part. Okay. Because I was going to be doing like this like Latin guy. But right. He was so damn funny that I was like playing a straight man to him, you know what I mean? Right. Well, I always thought the names were kind of mixed up anyway, because that always seemed like uh, Bob, and that seemed like Seth. Yeah, no, he's Bob. No, I know, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Name-wise, if you look at Adam with the yeah. accent, you always think, you're Bob. Yeah. And that would be Cedric, yes. but I want... Yeah, it man. made you <laughs> punch and hand balloon. Wow. <laughs> you can actually put your hand in there. Do what? Do whatever you want to do. Getty, Getty, whatnot. You guys, yeah. you guys are buddies? Yeah, I love him. 
What's yeah, he doing he nowadays? Became, he's doing, he was actually doing a play in uh, Los Angeles. Works all the time. Uh, Did he ever come to do this kind of stuff? Or does he do cons? Or? Um, I don't know. He probably does. I mean, uh, it's pretty... Six and Gangland is a pretty right. famous movie, and right. UHF has a real yeah, uh, cult fish, following. Yeah. 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 And yeah, that was a that was a really fun movie to work on. And Al is such a nice person. Yeah. You you ever talked to him? So? The last time I talked to him was at the Kamikaze, one of the big uh, comic festivals in Los Angeles. And he was signing autographs. And he had a long line. Yeah. 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 Really long yeah. line. Uh, Here, are, are you friends? Huh? Are you friends? Oh, with yeah. yeah. Well, I love them. You know, somebody came up and said, oh, yeah, I got Weird Al Yankovic's yeah. signature. And he said, uh, I told him I was going to see uh, John Paragon. And he said, oh, tell him I said hello. Right. <laughs> so then I run into him all the time. He has the most glorious, like, locks of hair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unreal. If Philo Barnhart was in here a month ago, he wanted me to tell you hi, too. Who is that? Philo Barnhart said he knew you. He did most little, likely, little, yeah. He's an animator on Little Mermaid. He, he, right. Uh, he's friends with um, the uh, director of Pee-Wee's Big Adventure. He, uh, Tim Burton? Tim Burton, you know, a little bit. He said he talked to you, running you a few times. What's the animation? It's been fun. Yeah, back to back to Hollywood. Oh yeah, back in bed, man. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like yawning during this interview. <laughs> Boy, is this guy bored or what? <laughs> no, yeah, I wish it. Yeah, I wanted to wait till the end. You know, wait till the end. You're you're quite a line here. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, I just couldn't go to sleep last night. Yeah. Then I started watching. I don't have like if I watch a movie. Right, it'll put me asleep. I know that I try to stay awake for the movie, and then I'll end up falling asleep. <laughs> so I watched the Independence Day resurgence. Oh yeah, That's and then I fell asleep through it, and then woke up and hit the button again, and it charged me another eighteen dollars. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Yes, I'm at I'm at the tell him that. Right. Yeah, like, I didn't mean to rent the same movie twice. I it wasn't that good. <laughs> no, eighteen dollars for uh, well, it's just, it says technically it's still in the theaters. Uh -huh, sure. Oh, nah, it's right. not really still in the theaters. You know, if you, if you can get it on the pay per view. So, <laughs> or yeah, or can I get you a sign my giant zombie head? Oh, sh sh oh, nice. <laughs> It looks better against black, then you don't notice that like yeah. half of my head is missing. I didn't cut it out and shine that. Yeah. Ah. I cut it a little bit short. Yeah, well, when I when I had to do this, I had to sort of configure a jawline. Right. right. <laughs> At Disney. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't get to give you the full design. Yeah. 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 That were here yesterday, the one on one, and then they bought them over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nick, nice seeing you tonight. So, where are you? Have you done anything else other than that great show? Uh, I did a television pilot. Called uh, Welcome to the Fun Zone <laughs> with uh, Weird Al. Wow. Doctor Doctor Demento was the yeah. musical director. Oh, that's great! I, I've never heard of that. Uh, yeah, he did the voice for the. Yeah. I don't know where. Before you sign it, before you sign all this stuff, I want to get my picture with him holding it. Oh, okay. All right. Will you, um, yeah. Okay. Take a couple, it's a terrible camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. There's a heavy sign. It's 
zombie on my shoulder. No, mine's made out of uh, home core. And I put lights. I was going to brought my lights, but I didn't use them. Time to put them on. Here, smile with your zombie. Smile with your zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can have uh, <laughs> give the uh, Alex one of the we have to take a few large. Okay, what size do you wear? Uh, I wear two X. I got two X. Yeah, I might actually do. And this is three X. You said that your husband's even bigger than he is. When they do these kind of things, you ever get somebody who is super obnoxious or kick out? Oh, there's a lot of people who are, you know, just, they want to say some, you know, opinion about it all or oh, opinion about sure. it. Oh, sure. It's like, that's the best thing to do. Well, I, mean, I just could imagine you've got these long lines of people, you don't know who's coming at you, you know? Oh, I mean, everybody is like, general, I haven't had anything, you know, just, you go to a comic book convention, you yeah. found some jerks. Right, you know. right. Yeah. Uh, I hear you.